Variables in SAS make repetitive data no longer a chore. For example, if I want to take a certain color, I can just remember the variable name instead of the color value. And variables can be used in a variety of ways, such as being used in selectors, using strings, using them in mathematical statements, using them in if conditions, and so on and so forth. This lecture will cover basic usage of variables. So when we declare variables in SAS, we always put the dollar sign, a lot like the PHP language. Then immediately after the dollar sign, we need to declare the variable name so we can point to the variable at a later date. So in this case, this variable name is width. Now be very careful when naming your variables. Make sure you don't put in any special characters as this can lead to errors and also no spaces either, but you can put numbers in if you'd like. So now that we've established how to create a variable, then what we need to do is assign a value to that variable. The way we do that is we put a colon in there, and then after the colon, we have the value of the variable. Now the difference between a variable in SCSS and SAS is the ending semicolon. And the reason why I actually like the ending semicolon is because it allows us to define multiple variables on a single line. And that's with SCSS because it knows where the variable ends. However, with SAS, it's a little bit different than that because each variable is declared on its own line and cannot be declared in line with other variables. The reason being is because they do not have the ending semicolon. So that is just something to note down with variables in SAS. But however, as I've already said, I do prefer the SCSS syntax to the SAS syntax. So let's look at the first data type variables. We have numerical values, such as a measurement, 600 pixels, 600 EM. We have a floating point value, which is not a whole integer, such as 1.5, 1.2, and you can include a measurement in there, such as EM pixels, and so on and so forth. And you have just a whole integer on its own. These are all valid data types for numerical variables in SAS. Now you'll notice that with the produce CSS, it will not show any of this variable data. That's because this is SAS specific syntax and is no use to us in CSS. So the final produce CSS will ignore all of the SAS syntax. So now what I'd like to do is start to call back some of my variables and start to use this in a productive way. So first of all, what I can do is instead of declaring the width right here statically, I can easily delete that value out and then call back the width variable. Again, we just type it as we did here the dollar sign, then the name of the variable, hit save, and you'll notice that this will change from 200 to 600. Then on top of that, we have the floating point number, so let's change the line height, and we'll call back the float variable, and save it, now it's gone to 1.5. I can also change it to int, so that should change to 20. Now on top of that, you don't have to have a variable as the entirety of the properties value. For example, we now have string data types, and your strings can be with single quotes, double quotes, or no quotes. So let's start with the single quotes first of all, and take a look at this background CSS property with a URL. I'm going to delete out the existing URL, and then I'm going to call back the string variable. If I hit save, you'll now notice that it will change to images backslash hello.jpg. I can change this to string two, so then we have the double quotes if we wish. Now you may also notice that it optimized the single quote, so if I go back to string and hit save, it doesn't actually take any effect whatsoever. It's still got the double quotes right there. So that's just something to bear in mind, but it's no big deal. At the end of the day, it's all the same to CSS. Now on top of that, we also have strings that do not have any quotes around them, such as this value, no repeat. So again, I can declare more than one variable in a value. So I can say dollar sign string three, and it is very case sensitive as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now, and you'll see it's showing no repeat. We can also call back a variable within a CSS selector. 
But please do note, it must be a string and it must not have the single or double quotes wrapped around it. So what I can do now is take a look at applying and calling back the string selector variable to this CSS selector. The way we do that is we put in the hash first of all and open and close our parentheses. Then between the parentheses we want to call back the variable string selector and go ahead and hit save. And now you'll notice that the value of this variable is being applied to this CSS selector. Now on top of that we can put another hash before it. So now our selector is targeting an ID or we could take it out and put the period in there so now our selector is targeting a class but please do know this hash right here is to do with sass that's very important to remember next up we have the color data types and the first type is a simple string so i can say call string save it and that string will be printed out here then also we can choose a hex color value so i can go ahead and save that and there is the hex color value. Then we have the RGB color format. So I'm just going to call that one back, RGB. And you'll notice something very interesting happens. What it does is it prints out a hex value and not the RGB value. And what SAS does is it realizes that RGB color format is number one, not compatible with older browsers. And number two, it's using more characters. So the hex color value is shorter and it takes up less space. So as a result, SAS automatically converts RGB and HSL color formats to hex. However, if a color format contains an alpha channel such as RGBA and HSLA, then it cannot convert it into hex. So if I call back the RGBA color format like so and that variable, you'll notice that it prints out the value of that variable. So that is the color data type variables. The final data type we'll review in this lesson is the list data type. Now just a quick note, all of the other variables that we have created are technically classed as lists. Now even though they only have one value, they're just classed as a list with one value, but they are a list data type nonetheless. Now we will go into lists in a later lecture that goes really in depth about the SAS script list functions and so on and so forth. But I want you to get a basic grasp of what a list is now. A list can contain multiple values separated by spaces or commas. Also a list can contain lists. So here with the list variable, we have the first list, which is one pixel, one pixel, three pixel black. Then we have a comma and the second list is 3 pixel, 3 pixel, 4 pixel, hash CCC. So we have two lists inside of a list. So what I can do is go ahead and call back the list variable and hit save. And you'll notice that it will produce the list like so. So now we have two box shadows. Now it's entirely up to you whether you want to do it on a line by line basis or whether you'd like to do it all in line, it doesn't matter, it's still a valid list. We are also going to review some more data types in later lectures. So for example, we have the map data type, which is a bit more advanced than the list where we have a key and a value pair. And again, we will talk more about this, but it is actually very, very useful. And also we have the Boolean data type, which is true or false. And also we have the null data type. Null is a special value that says there is no value assigned to this variable. So we will review those data types in later lectures. But now we know how to declare variables, the data types we can use within variables, and how to call back our variables.